Alright, now we'll just chat. So the story that I never quite know about, actually wait, there's one more thing I need to do. Is it on? It, it's on, but I want to connect the microphone. Unfortunate. Hmm? Help. I just don't understand why you want to balance that great big thing on the two, three... Okay, now. Mickey, I... if you put the lid on, it boils quicker. There you are. Yes. All right. So what I'm interested in is you growing up. D did I? If you did grow up at some point, right? And you grew up in Germany? Until I was 10. And then tell me about, well, first of all, what was it like in Germany? Well, I wasn't really exposed very much because first I had an English governess till my brother was born when I was five. And then I really didn't get out very much. Uh, I didn't get out on the streets or anything alone. So you were with and, your parents yeah, and your governess? And, and I spoke English at home, so I didn't really understand what the people were saying. And I really didn't mix with anybody. So did and you go to school? When I was six. OK. Yes. So you had four years of school in German? Three. Three years, okay. Yeah. And uh, I couldn't speak German when I first went there. And you literally couldn't speak German? No. Huh. I spoke okay. English at home. Okay. And I must have understood a bit because the maid spoke German. But Did you I, have friends? Uh, before you went? Not really. We, I went with the governess to neighboring gardens and uh, played in the garden or something. Hmm. We went to the... Uh, the, a big garden called the Palm Garden, where they had all kinds of trees and flowers and all kinds of tennis courts. And in the winter, we skated on the tennis courts. And I climbed the cherry tree and ate the cherries. But I didn't really know anybody very much. So you did that with Bobby eventually, your brother? Uh, Bobby had a German governess, and she hated me, and I hated her. You each had separate governesses? Well, I didn't have a governess at that point because oh. I was five years old when he was I, born. I see. And I was at school then. I see. But. Uh, How would you get to school? She took me always late because she didn't like me and she knew I got so upset if I was late. So I'd go in and I'd say, Fräulein Lerne, we're going to be late. If Oh, I'm just going to drink my coffee. And then she would drink her coffee, and then we would be late. We said, you're going to be late, you're going to be punished. And uh, that's how it went. And then when we got there, I had a teacher called Frau Brieur. And we all had to get up and curtsy and say, Guten Morgen, Frau Brieur. And I particularly disliked that. In fact, I didn't like school at all. The only thing I ever got a, 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 a A plus in was religion. That was after Hitler came, and I wanted to show that I was not intimidated, which I should have been. So what? So you were in Frankfurt. How did how did you sort of become aware of Hitler, and what were the early well, effects? Well, Daddy was a PhD in political science. And he was very interested in politics. I thought economics. No, that was me. Okay. Maybe right. it was the same political economy. University something. of Heidelberg thesis. Is yeah, that it was. Yeah, it has. <laughs> but it was it was politics and political economy, uh -huh. and I don't know. It was slightly different in here. Anyhow, he always used to discuss politics with me. I was the oldest, and I was. I wasn't a son, but I was the only thing he had. And discussing it with Grandma would have been a bit difficult. He didn't really discuss. Grandma was totally disinterested. Except Grandma used to go to a thing called the Club for F Peace and Freedom. 
And she always said, you know, we never get one new member. We always just speak to ourselves. <laughs> and we're totally convinced and uh, it really doesn't do any good at all. But anyhow, he showed me a picture of Hitler when I was about eight and said, this is a very bad man and if he ever wins, we're leaving the country. And so all kinds of things happened and I went to vote with my mother and um, the National Socialists won the election and in the evening I heard the President Hindenburg had uh, made Hitler the Chancellor and so I went into Daddy and I said, well, he's won, are we leaving? And he said, certainly. And three weeks later we were out of the country and this was an amazing decision because my father never could make decisions. So. My recollection is you told me that actually Grandma was the one who, who did all engineered the work. this. Oh, yes. So well, how did that happen? Well, firstly, first she really didn't quite realize, but she had some very good friends called Oppenheim, uh, older, old people. They're one of the gardens I used to go and play in. And uh, they came over to our house the next day and they said we just want to say goodbye to you because we're going to kill ourselves tonight we're over 80 we don't want to go to another country and start over there's nothing we can really do and uh, so that's what we're going to do and we just want to say goodbye and uh, that's what they did hmm. and that really shocked her incredibly so I think then she took it very seriously. And then she arranged for Daddy to go and play golf in Belgium because she felt he would be much more upset than she because she was, after all, American. And she, while she loved Germany, I never understood why, she uh, found it easier to leave. So she, she went to, he went to, uh, Belgium, and she went to San Francisco because her citizenship had lapsed. And where were you at this point? And I was, my brother and I were sent to our grandmother in Italy. Okay. Where in Italy? She lived in Murano, which mm -hmm. used to be Austria till the First World War, and which then became the Italian Tyrol. And uh, she went back to uh, San Francisco to uh, get her citizenship back because American women couldn't keep their citizenship uh, until 1923 and she got married in 1922. Hmm. So, so, she, so coming to San Francisco in those days meant flying or taking a boat or, or what? I think she took a boat, yeah, she took a boat. So she's in Germany, so she took a boat to New York and then a train yes, across I the country? Yes, I think so, I think That's so. quite a trip. Yes. How long was of she gone? Of course, that's what we took, or? too, when yes. we came over. Yes, But she was coming back. She was just going to San Francisco to do some business and then yeah. get back to... Uh, and she came to pick you up? Well, we never knew when she was coming, so it was very traumatic because we were stuck there in this, uh, oh, then Granny didn't want Bobby, my brother, because she, he, a five-year-old boy was too much for her. And so she said she would be happy to have me, but Bobby had to go somewhere else. So Mommy begged me, would I go with him to look after him? So I said, okay. So she put us in this children's home in the Dolomites, which was absolutely beautiful and the food was wonderful and everything, but the woman was a Nazi and a sadist. And so she made life really miserable for us and we didn't know how long we were going to stay. She, we heard her telling someone we were going to stay for three years. So by then I was ten and my brother was five and uh, that just seemed like forever three years with this awful woman in this dreadful place but then so were you going to school while you were there or no there so was school no years school. or it no. was summer or there was, was no just school in. there was nothing yeah. okay and of course he was too young to go to school but uh, 
there were some other children there, and uh, there was an Italian woman with Italians, with an Italian girl who was a favorite, and they said I should speak English to her. And when I spoke English, they said, "Oh, that's not English." <laughs> so, so have you kept up with any of those people on Facebook good, or anything like that? Good God. No. I it was my ambition to get out of there and spit in the woman's eye. Mm -hmm. But by the time we got back with my children, nobody Bailey remembered B. her. Huh. <laughs> so did we go and look for her? I don't remember yes. that actually. Yes. Do you remember that, Mickey? I remember there was a really good Wiener Schnitzel around. Yeah, we went to Gump's, that was the cafe, and one man seemed to vaguely remember her. And he said that her adopted son married the daughter of Mengele. That okay. put her in her right place. So that was be your Nazi. Yes, yeah, she was a real Nazi, and she was a, she was a sadist because she used to uh, the food, as I say, was wonderful, but I wasn't hungry, so she'd make me heap my place, uh, my plate, and the minute. I would start to eat, she'd put on the German radio with all the Nazis' songs and propaganda, and I would get nauseated and run to the bathroom, and then I'd get punished. So did she know you were Jewish? Oh, yes. That was she, the idea. Yeah, but she said, she said, oh, you're really not Jewish, you're different. I said, no, I'm not different. So, some, then Grandma came back. Yeah, Grandma came back, and, and where I, was where was uh, Daddy? your father? Also? He came to visit us too. What was he doing? From playing golf in Belgium. How long can you play golf? I don't. It was, it's lovely. Years. Yeah, yeah but it's lovely then. <laughs> <Not suit. laughs> well, wait a minute. But anyhow, he. I mean, he went and played golf in Belgium while you were in a children's home. Yes. What? And he came and visited us, and he was very nice. And as a matter of fact, our mate came and visited us. Why didn't he just rent an apartment? Because he would have been incompetent at taking care of you? Oh, yes. Yeah. But I don't know. But anyhow, our mate came. Yeah. She was very nice. Uh -huh. But nobody told us how long we huh. were staying. So, well, And know, Bobby probably. was constantly being put to bed for one terrible sin or another. Whenever I went up, I was upstairs and his room was downstairs. And whenever I went up the stairs, his voice would come, Peggy! And I said, no. And he only spoke German. And I said, where are you? I'm being punished. It's always being punished. So, and, and I was the oldest one there, so I always had nasty things like they had a pet rabbit, and I had to guard the door while they killed it for lunch. Hmm. And that was rather unpleasant. Well, it could have been worse. You could have had to kill it. No, but I had to eat it. Yes. Um, so eventually you got to England. How did that happen? Well, was that next? Yeah, well, first I got very sick. And by then she, this woman really disliked me, and she wouldn't let me see a doctor. And by some miracle, my Aunt Alma, who was a terribly stupid woman, but she's, I, came, I had terrible pain, and I was supposed to be having a siesta after lunch, and I came downstairs crying, and I said, you know, I really do have to go to a doctor. I am, have a terrible pain. And there was my Aunt Alma. And my Aunt Alma said, what is this? Is the child ill? Oh, she said, no, it's nothing. I said, Aunt Alma, I have middle ear infection. I am very sick. I feel terrible. So in a rare moment of courage, Aunt Alma looked at this woman and said, I will be back tomorrow morning to pick up Peggy to take her to the doctor in Murano. And by golly, the next morning, there she was with the manservant. Hmm. And they took me down, and then they called up Grandma. Actually, she hadn't gotten to America yet. Anyhow, they somehow got her off the boat and told her I was very ill. And by the time she came, home, came I was much better, and she was very angry. Huh. Very angry. But anyhow, I was there for quite a while, and then... Um, Meaning six months longer? No, no, I was there for two or three weeks. Oh, two and or three weeks, this was, okay. Uh, well, <laughs> Wait a minute. 
I had a middle so, ear infection. Okay, but Grandma, bed, grandma, grandma then took the went to America. Boat, got off the boat, took the boat, took the train across the country, took the train back across the country, took the boat back to Murano, and that was two or three weeks. The boat was in Southampton, and okay. she, uh, it didn't take that okay. long to okay. get to Italy. She went, okay. went through Switzerland. And, okay. But anyhow, she then came back, and... Um, she told the woman that she wanted us to have more fresh air and she told me she'd come and pick us up in a couple of months. She had to get us settled in London, which she did. And she picked us up. Mm -hmm. And we went first to Paris and then we went to London. And where did you live in London? We, we rented a house on at 53 Hampstead Way. And did you know that was going to be temporary in England, or did you think you were going to stay in England? We thought we were going to stay in England. And Grandma was working as a musical manager? Yes, yes. And She didn't like England. We loved it. I loved it. Probably like heaters. It was very, yeah. Refrigerators bigger than a bread box, things like that. Well, there was no heat. We had a little tiny gas stove in the fireplace. It cost a fortune, the gas, yeah. but unless you stood right in front of it, <laughs> it, it did very little. So, how many years did you spend in England? Uh, about six and a half. And you were away at school for most at of first, that? No, okay. at first we went to day school in London, King Alfred School. That was a day school, not a boarding school? No, no, it was a day school. And I did very well because nobody pushed me. And, and I, I, when nobody pushes me, I work very hard. Bobby, when nobody pushes him, did nothing. All he did was make mud puddles. And so then she decided to take both of us out, cause, which I thought was very unfair. Although there was an incident which she said caused her to take me out of school. I never quite believed it. But uh, I was, I had a very good appetite and the food was very bad. I had lunch at school. And um, then we had tea and we had a lady looking after Bobby when he came from school, Miss Shaw. And Daddy would join us and Daddy was always trying to show off to Miss Shaw. So um, this one day, the lunch had been particularly bad, and it was, I believe, my birthday, hmm. uh, close to my birthday, and Annie had baked a big cake with whipped cream and stuff. So, uh, 73 years ago today. <laughs> so I, that's true. So I, um, we were sitting there, and I was hungry, and I wanted another piece of cake. And Daddy, who was sitting there making himself important, said, I forbid it. And I said, why do you forbid it? I'm hungry. He said, you have had enough. So I called Annie and Annie said, leave the child alone. She always eats a lot for tea because the food is so bad at school. Let her have the cake. I have forbidden it. So he forbade it. And I went downstairs where the cake was put into the... Um, the room where the, we had an ice box. There was no refrigerator yet. Anyhow, it was sort of a pantry. And the cake was put down so there. So literally an ice box. Yeah. I went down there and um, there was the cake. So I cut myself a big piece of cake and mommy came home. And she said, what are you doing here, Peggy? And I said, well, Daddy forbade me to eat any cake, and I am hungry, and I want to eat the cake, so I cut myself a piece, and I am going to eat it. So we were both standing there when we hear Daddy coming down the steps, and we begin to laugh. And we try not to laugh, but we explode in laughter, and of course he heard us. So he opened the door and said, What are you doing there? I have forbidden you to eat that cake. And uh, Mummy said, let her eat the cake. She's hungry. Well, anyhow, at this point, he was really, really angry. And I was stuck there in this little place. 
and he picks up a big carving knife off the table and sort of comes for me. And I was very frightened, but I ran. I somehow got away from him, ran around the table, rushed up the stairs to the bathroom, which had the only door that locked. So I got into the bathroom and locked the door. He ran after me with the carving knife. And this really upset Mummy. So he was furious, absolutely furious. So Mummy and Annie, our maid, got a hold of a mattress from a bed and held it up to the door because they were afraid he was going to knock. So this went on for quite a while. And after a while, I didn't um, hear any more. So I carefully stuck my head out of the toilet door and he saw me. I went, I went into the bathroom behind the door forgetting that there was a mirror that you could see me. Anyhow, he started in again. So somehow he got disarmed or shut, uh, stopped being so angry. I don't know what it was, but Mommy said that she couldn't take the risk of leaving me in the house with him. So she sent me away to a boarding school, which was a terrible school, but Gray Warnham, who was a well-known English architect, was married to some kind of cousin of Grandma's from San Francisco, and he recommended the school, and he recommended this other awful school for Bobby. So that's where I went. And then eventually you got to b -Dales? Well, yes, I wrote very angry letters in dialect in German. The German teacher couldn't understand the dialect, the slang. Mm -hmm. And my mother wrote back saying, if you write any more letters like this, I won't write to you anymore. I said, fine, then I shall run away. I said, I have one civilian dress. Don't expect me at the station waiting for a train because I shall not be there. I am not going to be in school uniform. I am going to have on my civilian dress and I'm going to walk the three miles to the house of our friend the surgeoners and that is where I shall stay. Yeah. Which, I, which I would have done. So she, uh, she said I could leave that school. I was there a year, it was horrible. And I missed a whole year's work because they were way behind. And they were trying to make gentle women. And every now and then when I look in the mirror, I think, good God, Peggy, you've turned into a gentle woman. I don't think so. <laughs> I Are you making coffee? Uh, in order to grind the beans, I have to make a no some noise. Right. Well, so make why, the noise. Why don't we, we'll call a timeout here. Make the noise. Let's have a finish. He'll do it. I'm doing fine. Okay, so how did you happen to come to America? Well, I got very frightened when I saw all these guns on the roofs. And they were building an underground shelter in uh, Golders Green. And I don't know if they ever got it finished because they were always having tea when I saw uh, them. <laughs> the workers? Yes. But... Um, I was scared. They were practicing. That's, that's it. They were practicing uh, with airplanes at night and and shooting and stuff. I could hear it. And uh, Daddy wanted to be naturalized, but he couldn't do it. And we were enemy aliens. So I didn't see that we were doing anyone any good. And then. Oh, it has to be connected. Let's keep going. Grandma had had made had heard there was such a nice hotel in Eastbourne that was a seaside resort. Uh -huh. So she wrote to the best hotel there, which was a famous hotel, and said um, she'd like two rooms. And they sent a plan of the whole hotel uh -huh. and said choose any huh. two. And she thought that was rather peculiar the height of the season. Yeah. 
And she well, asked. There was this war coming. Yeah, she asked someone. She said, "Now, why would they send me the plan for the whole hotel?" And they said, "Because that is where the German bombers are going to go over <laughs> first. So this huh. made her think a little. And I said, "What are we doing here? You're American. Why don't we go to America?" So we did. On the 8th of August, on the President Roosevelt. Okay, stop for a second. Let me adjust this. Okay, the President Roosevelt was a ship? Yes. It was really very nice. Uh, the surgeon's daughter, Daki, and I th was the boy on there too, or was it just the girl? I think it was just the girl. I think she was, she'd gotten married and they were going to be stationed in Washington. And she was, uh, she was on there. And it was, it, all kinds of things. I discovered club sandwiches I'd never heard of before. So this was to get away from the war? Yes. Yes. Okay. And so you We were leaving and okay. we left Daddy there. And I had had, I had, when we left school, Actually, I was very ill. I had the flu. I had 104. And I had a terrible time not having them discover that I was hmm. had such a high temperature because I didn't want to stay at school. Right. And so, uh, and I was sort of delirious. I was not well at all. But I managed to pack and get on the train and Daddy met me. Mommy was, where was she? I think she was in America again. I think she was. Anyhow, so Daddy picked me up and he said, I am thinking of joining the barrage balloons. And I thought he meant as a balloon. I thought he was trying to be funny, you know, he gained some weight. But I didn't realize that he meant he was going to work the barrage balloons. So anyway, what are barrage balloons? They were these metallic balloon things that they hoisted up to try and deflect the aeroplane, the various mm -hmm. uh, things that guided them to drop mm -hmm. their bombs. So they lifted them up and they pulled them back down? They were up there all the time okay. over the city. Uh -huh. But uh, I just thought he was being funny. I was very ill and I had to go to bed and I was sick for a long time. I mean, considered maybe two weeks, and then Grandma came home from America, and Daddy went to Southampton to meet her, and she said, where's Peggy? And he said, don't worry, don't worry, Miss Winter is with her. Miss Winter was a trained nurse that we had when we were very ill, <laughs> which didn't help Grandma at all. But uh, he was going to stay in England, mm -hmm. and we set forth. And then um, we went to New York, where Mr. Dalrymple, he was the father of um, a well-known person in the film business who I believe, I seem to remember she was the mistress of the owner of Time magazine or something. Yeah. She was well-known, but he had a terrible Brooklyn accent and and I remember saying to Mommy, what language is he speaking? <laughs> she, said, <laughs> she said, it's English. It's just that he has this very strong New York accent. I said, I can't understand the word he's saying. And we had a drawing room to uh, San Francisco, and Uncle Jake had left a message with Mr. Dalrymple. If she's too broke, I'll pay for it. Well, that hurt Mommy's pride. So she paid for it. And she spanked Bobby for the f only time I have ever seen. Bobby, after we ate in the dining car, had a toothpick. And my, we had slept in the same room, all three of us that way, for a couple of weeks. And we were quite on edge. Mm -hmm. And mommy leant, leaned over the suitcase to pack. 
and Bobby stuck <laughs> the toothpick in her behind. <laughs> And she, that wasn't what she was looking for. She wheeled around and hauled out and <laughs> slapped him in the face that his teeth rattled. And, and he, we'd never seen her slap him before. But it was memorable. Yes. So then you got to San Francisco. What did you find? An enormous family of dinosaurs. Dinosaurs even then? Especially, yes. <laughs> There were uh, these uh, men over six foot tall, and Uncle Jake, who was God, and Uncle Alice, who thought Aunt that Alice. the uh, San Francisco was the Earth's navel. Aunt Alice. Oh. Aunt, what did I say? She said Uncle Alice. Oh, Uncle Alice. No, Aunt Alice. It's Alice Cooper, who's a no. band, but this Aunt was Aunt Alice, 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 his Morgan. wife. And they were all questioning me, and they were all calling me Alice. And I'd never been called Alice, and so I didn't answer. I looked at her. So we got a very angry letter from her saying, people who let, uh, be careful of the girl yeah, yeah, yeah. who get, oh, no. who get oh, nick let nicknames carry Perfect. them, get carried away with nicknames. She had a problem with nicknames? Yeah, she, I wasn't being called Alice. Because oh, you were supposed to be named after her? Yes, I thought Jewish yes. people didn't name their children after living. Well, people. I was supposed to be named after her, and, and I had never, she said, you've never been called Alice, have you? I said, no, I have. But she was a... But at some point you changed your name to Peg. The, the governess did, Miss Whitehead, my English governess. She did some papers? No, she, she firstly... Mommy didn't like that in your, in Germany they called me Alicia. She didn't like that. So Miss Whitehead, whom I called Artie, called me Peggy. I always called Peggy. And then when I was naturalized, I changed it officially to uh -huh, Peggy I Alice, see. also known as Alice Jane Bertha Uttenbeck. <laughs> like... Uh, uh, some kind of a highwayman, a.k.a. Alias. So where did you live in San Francisco? In a hotel. Do you remember what hotel? I've forgotten its name. It was somehow on Pacific Avenue way down. It had a Spanish name. So a small know. hotel. Yeah, a cheap and, hotel. And what did you do in San Francisco? Complain. Uh, I didn't like Did you go to school? No, no. I was by then... Uh, Shouldn't you have been in school? I was 16. I had graduated from school. Jason's 15 and he's basically starting high school. How but come you had graduated from school? The schools in England were much better. But you were only in England for four years. And one of them was in that last school. I was in England six and a half years. Is that right? And... Uh, I had taken school certificate and qualified to get into the university, and I was through. Mm -hmm. So if you would have stayed in England, you would have gone to, quote, the university? Well, I qualified. I didn't really want to. What university would that have been? I don't know. I think it was Oxford, huh. although I took the, uh, the test for Cambridge, but right. I, I did very well. I got a... The only one I got excellent in was German, and they said, of course. Well, actually, I was not quite 10 when I stopped going to school there, and, and there was really was no reason why I should be so good. It was quite a few years ago. So how come they drink coffee and meet the press and it doesn't slurp? Do they? Do they? Sure, they have those mugs and everything. But they probably have water. Just, why should water slurp, Ness? Because it's not hot. Hmm. Oh. Okay. So you were in the hotel the whole time in San Francisco? Uh, well, first we were in Atherton in their country okay. home. Okay. And then we were... Atherton we, was their country home? Yes. I see. And, and I, 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 we went around to, to various people. They all had big estates, and everyone had really more to do than my relatives. They all had tennis courts or swimming pools or something, mm -hmm. but they didn't have anything. Mm. And uh, I was different. That's terrible. I was not... Uh, 
uh, my aunt Alma said to me, I don't understand why you're sitting here reading. Nancy put on her white bathing suit and she just had dates every day. And I said, Aunt Alma, that is not the type I am. I do not put on a white bathing suit and go out with every Tom, you Dick, and Harry. red bathing suit. No, I was more discriminating. I, I preferred to read. What I do see. I want to go without those idiots? So what were you I reading? I go with a 16-year-old American idiot. Um, I don't know. I was... And I, Proust? I, I read much more... <laughs> deep things then than I do now. Uh, but Okay, so now, so you're, you're not in school. Were you going to go time. to school? I How long were you in San Francisco? I should ask. I don't know, maybe two months. Oh, okay, so not very long. And then you came to Los Angeles? Yeah. Mommy had a lot of friends here, a lot of musicians. Uh-huh. And uh, So emigres yeah. from Europe who yes. came here because of Hollywood? Yeah. For, because of the war. Mm -hmm. Mr. Uh, Majeski, who had the Musical America, the paper that Mommy represented and got ads for and mm -hmm. stuff, he said she could work for him in San Francisco, in, in Los Angeles, but not in San Francisco. Okay. And anyhow, we didn't want to be right in the bosom of this family. It was Grandma very, felt the same way? I don't know. I guess I didn't really ask her. But uh, whenever I said something, she said, it's just like hearing dear mother speaking. Hmm. That meant enough. Hmm. But, um, and they all had these limousines. They had these big cars, uh, Cadillacs and chauffeurs. Hmm. And I got so car sick going up and down those hills. So, so let, me, let me ask you this. I realize most people understand their family. But was one of these people grandma's mother? <laughs> What happened to no. Grandma's mother? Who was no. dear mother? Grandma's mother was still in Italy. Okay. You remember the film? Didn't you, you saw the film? Film. The film was Cher. Mussolini. It was a film about Mussolini telling people they had nothing to worry about. I never saw even this. though they were. Jewish. I think I'm confusing you with Bobby. I saw the film with Cher where she was. Mo where she went to the opera at the Met no. and lived in Little Italy, but no. that's that's not no, the film you're talking right. about. Moonstruck. Yeah. Moonstruck, yes. No, it's no, a different no. film. Oh, that was a wonderful film. I <laughs> that was a good film. This is a film about where Cher is a bunch, is, are they all Jewish? She rescued a bunch of people, didn't she? Uh, they were Jewish Italian people and Mussolini told them they didn't have to worry. Yeah, they could but stay they really and did. they all got into trouble. Mm. But that it was exactly the story of Granny. And I, I must have been Bobby. I called up mm. Bobby. I said, have you seen that film? And he said, yes. And I said, it's exactly Granny. Do we have a name? But what actually happened? I think it was called Tea with Mussolini. I think it was called Tea with Mussolini. But what exactly happened with Grandma? She, uh, well, your, your Grandma. Well, before we left London, we called her up. Grandma kept calling up and said, Mother, if you don't leave now, you won't be able to bring anything except a toothbrush. <laughs> and she said, I have written to Mussolini, and he wrote back, Stara tranquilla, cara signora, dear lady, just stay calm, everything is fine, and that is what I'm doing. So then, after we were here for a little while, we get a telegram that she is coming. And she arrived. Unfortunately, Aunt Alma came here too. And Aunt Alma and Mommy and I were at the Union Station and we were waiting for the train. Yeah, the Union Station in Los Angeles. Yes. And we were laughing and everything. Suddenly we realized the, the train has come and gone. <laughs> Where is Granny? <laughs> so we were beginning to feel a little bit alarmed. We went into the waiting room. <laughs> there was uh. a stick and a man sat down to here on a formidable bosom with a lorgnette. Was sitting Granny being waited on by a nurse. She was having an attack of nerves. So how old was she? You have no idea, right? I don't know, but she was not pleasant. <laughs> and poor Alma, who was her younger sister, very much in awe of uh -huh. her, and she was scared to death. 
and Granny was furious because we'd missed her all together. <laughs> we were there in order to pick her up. Ah, kind of like when I was supposed to meet you in London. You didn't try. Oh, yes, I did. I was a late. A little. <laughs> and you were then in the lobby on Gloucester Road, and I was so upset because you'd gone to uh, Corn Cornwall or something. And I didn't know where you were. I had no address, no nothing. And um, Otto said, he's here. I said, what are you talking about? He said, Stephen is here. I said, what do you mean Stephen is here? Bum just came into the, uh, uh, into the front. Uh, he said, the bum is Stephen. I said, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> I've been... I was. carried away listening to the Pancho Gonzalez Charlie oh, Passarell no. match that took two yeah. days to play. Yeah, well, was. anyhow, Granny rented a house Famous on match. Ogden Avenue. <laughs> yes. And there she was, and she had a very good maid who was uh, originally Viennese, who cooked very well. But Granny had suddenly, she was so stingy, she always tried to economize on food. and, and it. Uh, She'd invite me to lunch, and, and, and I'd say, oh, so delicious. Well, it was awful, because she left out the main ingredients. So she would have had a roast beef sandwich without the roast beef? Yeah, certainly without uh, any, any butter or any mayonnaise or anything, and the bread would have been two days old. And then <laughs> so let me ask you this. Did Grandma have a father? Yes, and she says she was very fond of him, and he liked her very much. But Granny took Mommy to uh, Germany when she was a child. Oh, the father was in San Francisco. And the father was in San Francisco. And Mommy said he used to come over and visit them. But I've always thought of Granny as a spider, you know, yeah. the, who eats their mate. And I think she sort of ate him. So do we know his name? Uh, I think his name... Why don't I know his name? I should know so his name. So it would have been Marcus Levinson, yeah, one of those Marcus names? Yeah, Marcus was his name. Morris, I think it mm. was. Isn't this picture up there somewhere? No, that's Daddy's father. Mm. I have one on my desk. So is those the two people on the Pioneer Jews on the steamer? Or those are Grandma's grandparents? I showed you that book, that picture of two people coming to San Francisco on the steamer. I don't remember. All right. well, and it was them? No. No, he didn't come on a steamer. Right, he was a clerk in right. San Francisco. Okay. Yeah, and Granny was born in Virginia City, the right. first white okay. Which we've girl now, born in Virginia right. City. Okay. Which we've now moved from California to Nevada for the first Yes, of the I don't know how we did that, but it was <laughs> something to do with the gold yes. rush. Okay. Now, okay. Was it always in Nevada? Yes. Yes, but He's being Peggy's, funny. Peggy's story always had it in California until I found it in Nevada. Oh, I, I, thought it, I thought it was California. <laughs> they have a very loud steam train there and a fire engine museum that we found with Jason one day. Um, so, okay, so Ogden is where the house was in, like, Hollywood? Yes. And, and so Grandma's mother stayed there with yes. you? Yes, not with me. She had her own house. I see. And you went to Hollywood she High School. Rented it three weeks. Yes. How'd that go? Terrible. Why? Because it was awful. I went. I changed my program three times. I uh, first I was horrified how how old fashioned the whole thing was. The desks were totally old fashioned. The uh, everything. Good God! Do you realize it's after five? Okay, it's five. So do you need, when do you need to get ready? Well, I want to get something for her. What can All I right. get? So should we stop this session and continue it some other time? Or do you, if you're going to get something for her, I think we need to do that. Let's make well, the transition to UCLA. Yeah, we let's, could let's, go let's, to a market. We could go to Gelson's. You, let's finish. Let's get you out of yeah. Hollywood High. Then you can go to the market. I'll go Anyhow, home. Anyhow, the first... I'll meet you back uh, here at 6. The first week... You're going to go home and be back here by 6? Yes. That'll be entertaining. Why don't you meet her? Have a fast car. What? Why don't you... <laughs> anyway, let's let's finish this. You, <laughs> and, a you can, and a tow truck that follows by. You can decide what I'm going to do later. Okay. <laughs> okay, anyway. So Hollywood High, the desks were all fashion, and you're someone who likes cutting-edge 
stuff. No, after it all. was stressful. You're known for that. The teachers didn't know how to teach. They had no computers. They had no video center. They had nothing. The teachers didn't know the subject. They'd say, "Now read page six and seven, and then answer uh, numbers one to twenty on page fifty. And they didn't do any teaching at all. It was ridiculous. And uh, I don't remember what I took the first week. I don't remember. Well, in high school, don't you sort of just take a general curriculum? I have no idea okay. what I do. And I decided this is ridiculous. I can know much more than the teacher, and I'm not going to do this anymore. So then I switched my program to something else, which I also don't remember what it was. At one point, it was French, and the teacher couldn't speak French at all. And. Uh, Sacre bleu. Then the third. Third Maybe week. I should teach French. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> the third, the third week, I changed again, and I got my period. And through the the climate change or something, I was very ill. I felt terribly ill, and I kept being ill in, in the bar, a toilet. And I went to the office, and I said, "You know, I have to go home." I'm just too ill to stay here. And they said, no, you can't go home. You have to you have to stay. I said, look, I have to go home. And they said, no, you can't. So I called mommy up. I said, mommy, you have to pick me up. I'm very ill and I can't stay here any longer. And I'm going to be in front of the school. So I was in front of the school and then I was ill in their, in their garbage. Container. So these weren't really the details I was looking no. for. <laughs> and then I never came back. Okay. And how did you get into UCLA? Well, actually, I was overqualified. I could have gotten in as a hmm. sophomore. Uh, on, I had on an athletic scholarship with, <laughs> yes. Jack, with Jackie Robinson. I had some <laughs> papers from England. But I never got my last uh, report card, which was very good, and I wish I'd gotten it. Did you ever meet Jackie Robinson? I saw him. I see. Uh, he was playing with uh, with Washington. They were winning Kenny all the football yes. games, and 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 Otto invited me to come, and I was wanted to be with Otto, so the men's seats were better. So. He gave me a pom pom and put me in the women's seats. <laughs> I was absolutely furious. So you got to see Jackie Robinson. I wasn't interested huh. in Jackie Robinson. Well, he wasn't Jackie Robinson then. Yes, he was pretty well. But he wasn't the first African American in Major League no, Baseball. No, he was yet. very well. He was known. quite an athlete. He played he five sports. He was very right? well yes. known. But uh, I was had to had to jump up and down and wave a pom pom, and I was furious. The artist said he couldn't resist. The seats were so hmm. much better. So do you think it was right to put Jackie Robinson on the California Mount Rushmore of sports as well as the New York one? Or do you, he's from was from like Arkansas or Alabama, right? Shouldn't I don't he? think there is such a thing. Oh, they have a thing now where they have, they have a California Mount Rushmore of sports. That Each state has a Mount Rushmore. This oh. is an ESPN thing. Well, I guess California is really, uh, he this, certainly belonged. He this certainly is on the web as opposed to actually carving yes. the ground. Yes, yes. Well, we don't know. He certainly, he certainly <laughs> They were going to put Barry Bonds in, but his head was so big they weren't going to have room for anybody else. The steroids all went yes. in the head. Yeah. But okay, the, the so what else is, at UCLA? You, you majored in art and then economics? Yeah. And you left after your sophomore year to go back east and marry yeah. Otto? When did, you, when did you go back east to get married? My senior year. Your senior year. Okay. I would have graduated, yeah. but I wasn't there for the finals. Hmm. It was rather unfortunate because that was this one semester I had all straight A's. Hmm. How did you meet out of there? I was walking along the uh, in front of Kirkhoff Hall and uh, I saw someone that looked familiar and I thought, oh, that's Otto Kaus. And then I thought, don't be ridiculous. He's in London, you're in Los Angeles. You always see people you think it, you know if you're in a mm -hmm. strange city and, and you realize they couldn't be there mm -hmm. and then he stopped and looked at me and I thought he was just looking at me to show me how rude I was being <laughs> by standing and staring at him so then he said do I know you I said yes you do we were at Beedales together for two years 
my name was Peggy Huttenbeck. So, my, is Peggy Her name Huttenbeck. still was Peggy Huttenbeck. So he said, well, well, you, do you want to come and have lunch? I said, that would be lovely, because I was too shy to go into the cafeteria. The cafeteria was pretty intimidating. It was to me. It was full of people. Right. Food. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> Presumably food. I didn't know what to do. Anyhow, uh -huh. we were right in front of the cafeteria at Kirk of Hall, yeah. you know. Well, it's and not like you were, I don't know, in college or anything and would be expected to be able to figure out a cafeteria. Okay. Well, right. Anyway. Anyhow. What a lucky break. So I, we tried to get in. It was full. Cafeteria was full. We couldn't get in. Okay. So he said, where do you live? And I said, Orange Grove Avenue. And he said, well, that's next door to me. Mm. And actually, come to think of it, maybe Gran Granny lived on Genesee. That's the next one over from Orton. I don't know. Anyhow, he said, I have a car. I'll take you. So that sounded good. How were you getting to school? Uh, I guess on the bus. Taxi? the bus. <laughs> no, huh. never took a chicken. <laughs> so anyhow, <Blue> I, bus? <laughs> <laughs> I might not have started school yet. I might have just gone to, to register. So lunch. I don't know. <laughs> but anyhow, so he came pick me up in the Ford convertible, not telling me didn't have any brakes. Hmm. So we had to start slowing down about two blocks <laughs> ahead of time. Oh, good thing. It made me very yeah. nervous. Uh -huh. And he was always late. Always late. Was this the one where the curb jumped out at you? No. Or that was your driving test? I get confused with these stories. Okay. But anyhow, yes. and that, so he picked me up every day. And we were always late. We always heard the bell going when we were still in the parking lot. It was awful. Yes. Until the day and when... That was Otto's fault, I'm sure. No, yes, it car was. He was always late. Oh. I was, I'm always punctual. Yeah. So anyhow, he was. Um, he came. Not um, one. He, then they were moving. They were going to move to Doheny, and I was there helping him pack or something. And he had this big box of wooden hearts that had sort of sayings, things burnt into them, and they decorated with pictures of gentians, flowers, and stuff. And somewhat incongruous. And it would say, to the robber of kisses, or uh, some such things. And I must have looked sort of annoyed. Everything always shows in my face. So he said, is this annoying you? And I said, yes. And he said, well, I'll be happy to show you the door. I said, fine goodbye and don't bother picking me up tomorrow because I should be taking the bus. So uh, I left and the next morning I got up real early and I walked to the, uh, Sunset Boulevard bus stop and uh, he came by, never got up early, came by in the convertible and said, come on, stop this nonsense, get in. I said, thank you so much. Goodbye. I'll see you at, at, on the campus. I am taking the bus. So he kept going round and round, and there was an old lady sitting on the bench with me. She said, what's the matter with you? He looks like a very nice young man. I said, I am taking the bus. So I did. Only smart thing I ever did. Because he crashed the car on the way to the campus? No, because he, he realized that I... I did what I said. What, what did he do that annoyed you? He had Valentine's. He had apparently he was souvenirs from other girlfriends. Is that correct? Is that what they were? Yes. But they were all the same souvenir from other girlfriends. No, it was a whole box. Hmm. Oh, only only one was a wooden heart. No, they were all wooden different things. Hmm. They all had different sentiments, and they were and all women when they went out with a guy gave him a wooden. It's a long time ago. I, well, I guess he went. We hadn't with, invented plastic yet. He probably went with them for for some time, you know. He never found out who they were from. Hmm. I mean, how old was he? He was like sixteen, right? Eighteen? No, he was nineteen. Older. You can collect a lot of woods that way. Yeah. 
he had this whole box of wood. <laughs> so I think if you guys are going to get it together, we should stop now and we'll resume. Mickey, in the do future. I have to put on my best outfit? Wait, for Miriam and not for Kamsa? Yes. Mickey, we were dressed perfectly for Kamsa. We were I would, didn't object. You didn't, hear me, you didn't hear me bitching. We were overdressed. I only objected when. Peggy was like making some comment about how the guy next to us had been eating all the time. It's a restaurant. He was eating. No, no. Yeah, but it was remarkable how he could it, it, draw it out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do I have... And that will wrap up the first episode of the Peggy Cows Chronicles. And the last. Let's hope it came out. <laughs>